look at uh, leadership and development first we ask ourselves what is leadership leadership is a very broad concept it can be defined in very many ways so i've just used that definition that really makes more sense to me that is more operational that may can actually be understood more and here it goes leadership is the capacity and will to rally men and women for a common purpose character and character that inspires confidence so there are five terms there i want us to unpack all right capacity what does capacity mean a leader must have knowledge a leader must have skills that's why even they say a governor needs to have a minimum of a degree but as you know in kenya we can actually be very crafty we have governors who actually have gone there and they have actually uh sculptured or they have actually forged or forged their certificate and you can see it becomes difficult to operate because you need to really know stuff you need to really connect the dots you really need to actually be able to bring people together and if you are head or between your ears there isn't much then it can't be a problem so you need basic knowledge i wouldn't say you need a phd you don't need to be a professor to be a leader and okay maybe you might not need even a, a degree per se but you need knowledge and skill and which you should actually have worked you've ever been uh, in a even in the village you can learn from the elders so you cannot just wake up one morning and be a leader will intrinsic motivation the desire should come from inside not only outside you should not only be expecting people to clap for you to be a leader being a leader is not easy people will bring you down people will frustrate you people will call you names people will actually do so all sorts of malingering you look at the newspapers how much they talk about the leaders so unless you have a drive that's just beyond uh, outside then you might not be able to be a leader look at martin luther king junior what he went through look at nelson rohilakla mandela he stayed in prison 27 years not 10 not 20 27 years that's a lot of uh, will that he has rally you must be able to influence persuade mobilize and to influence people you don't need a title you actually need to have something that's something that comes from you you must you need to have a gift so to speak and bring it out i think mandela showed resilience mandela showed he can actually hold a stand martin luther king showed he's bold he's courageous he's not afraid david in the bible showed that he's actually king material he can fight a goliath he can bring down lions he can, so you must have influence doesn't mean a title necessarily it means you have your gift once you bring your gift out so just remember any of us can be a leader you can be a leader in your field i like to say i'm a leader in communication because i know it inside out i love it i have passion for it so can you be a leader in your area can you bring out your talent and be a leader if you're a musician be a leader if you're a drama uh, artist be a leader if you're a engineer be a leader if you are a choir member be a leader all right okay common purpose you want to bring people to a shared goal something that they should aspire for uh like we have vision 2030 in kenya okay i don't know how much we are really inspired to that but as a leader maybe in your village in your group you need to have a purpose and then character you cannot actually be sloppy and expect to inspire people you cannot actually be uh, lazy and inspire people you must have some character character is built character must be shaped so nature of leadership is that a dynamic process you have to have giftedness it's about influence it's goal oriented this is just repeating what are some of the aspects of leadership right so you cannot lead every group or individual the same way you know every people if you are leading kids if you are leading adults if you are leading young people if you are with a group of ladies if you are a group of old women it's different giftedness one have inherent traits that need to be developed so the question of nature of nature and nature nature is its born nature is there. so these work together but you need to have that there are some who are better leaders than others and you have to accept that in life even it says there was one who was given five talents another one was given two another one was given one but what we need to do is double that talent all right the aspect is we, whatever we have you need to double it don't bury it influence must be able to persuade and it's not about money in kenya we are so used to be persuaded by money but money is, is a very poor measure of uh, one even wealth 
measure of how important you are because money really is, uh, is just a legal tender it's just papers that have been made to actually act for goods if you don't have goods and you have a lot of money and the goods might be in terms of your social uh, capital do you have uh, what have you done what have you manufactured have you written books have you done films have you done uh, uh, are you an expert in knowledge so influence is not by money alone it could be expert knowledge it could be legitimate power it could be also the aspect that uh, you have social capital and so on and goal oriented that's the nature of leadership all right so i've made quite some good aspect about leadership we're going to look at leadership in terms of three things okay we're going to use strategic communication method to define leadership i've said leadership can be defined in a thousand and one ways leadership is a multi-faceted concept so i'm defining it from a strategic communication methodology because that's my area and from that perspective leadership consists of three things so it can pass as three things goal setting foundation of strategic leadership demonstrating leadership we are going to look at each of those so that we can get to understand leadership and this is from a strategic communication methodology perspective so you'll find leadership defined in a thousand and one ways but this is how we are going to define it we first look at goal setting as a leader you've got to be a goal setter let us leaders must be forward thinkers and doers as a leader you must set goals for yourself as well as for your team or organization all right so one of the things about a leader you've got to have a goal you have big dreams if it is not time bound then it's not a goal a goal is really big dreams with time time bound all right i want this book to come out i want to write a big book by when 2021 or you just keep saying i want to write a book i want to write a book until you are dead and buried six foot under no so just know everybody has dreams but they become goals when you put time on it when it is time bound most of us will go down to the cemetery and enrich it more because we have not set goals we have big dreams we have good intentions we all want to be big people we want to be important but they just remain as dreams if you don't put time. So goal setting, a dream with a time bound, a dream with a time plan. According to O'Hare, goal setting considers three factors, shared values, vision, management of change. Let's look at those. What shared values? Goal setting involves shared values. What values do you hold as a leader? Your identification and promotion of values are critical to the organizational success. How do you as a leader ensure that values are shared by organizational members? So, you know, as a leader, you must have some values, high values. Like, well, I value education. I value integrity. I don't condone corruption. I don't condone sloppiness. Those are values, okay? And three approaches to sharing values with your group, with your people, with your community. Make them very clear. Let us actually know what are your values. In Kenya, I don't know what our values is, national values. Corruption is rampant. We keep saying we are actually uh, trying to tackle corruption, but you cannot see it with the leaders. Every time there's more corruption. So that, that's a bit uh, fuzzy, you know. The members cannot believe you. Uh, we are actually talking that we hold constitutional, uh, the constitution in high esteem. We keep breaking uh, the law. The courts are saying, do not actually do this, but we see what is happening. Yesterday, the Kenya Meat Commission was commissioned. The courts have said it's illegal. BBI, illegal, and they still want to continue it. So our values in Kenya are actually very mixed. And that can be difficult for the people to really trust the leader because you are speaking uh, with both sides of your mouth. Consensus, when team members see a leader's action on the stated values of the organization, they are sure that those values really are important to the organization now see our leaders they talk about you need to be true to yourself if you talk about corruption don't be corrupt zero corruption intensity means the individual connect emotionally with organizational values or community values or county values or country values and live up to them we have leaders who actually uh were totally not against their values, but they didn't have values. We know the governor of Kiambu, we know the governor of Nairobi, now the governor of Wajir. How can you be a governor who has been actually 
given the mandate to take care of people's property, to take care of people's money, and you're actually chewing it. It's very sad, very sad. These people need to be hanged, actually. You cannot be chewing people's money. And we told you, go take care of our money. The second thing, under goal setting. Remember, we're still under goal setting. It's vision. A leader must have vision. Vision that leaders have for their own team are based on shared values. Where do we want to go? Right? Where do we want to take Kenya now? Kenya poverty is at this level. Young people's unemployment is at 80%. Where do we want to be in five years? Maybe to 20%. We want to find jobs for the young people. A leader must first have a mental image of a possible and desirable step of the organization. So you must have a place where you want to. Some people keep talking about taking us to Canaan, whatever they mean by that. If Canaan means them being extremely rich and us poor, then we don't want that Canaan. So you should also make sure the people really understand where you want them to go. It's not easy. Let me, pro let me tell you, it's not easy. But that's what it is about leadership. Four steps involved in vision. Develop vision. Clarify vision. Act on vision the benefits of vision, right? You can look at that more, those four steps. <laughs> and a goal setting, management of change. Oh, people don't like change. Oh, people want to be stagnant. The inertia is very hard for people. You tell them change. I keep telling you, hey, change your way of communication, then you'll be a success. People still doing the same old things. I tell you, hey, you know, this is going to help you to actually become a better communicator the same thing and i cannot say you started now even during your fathers and grandfathers change is difficult so it's important that you know how to manage change articulating vision almost always entails changing the status quo for an as yet untested alternative you want to actually take people somewhere people are afraid people are usually scared very few people take the risks but those who take risks those who dare are the ones that really actually reap the fruit. So I want to tell you to be more of a change seeker rather than status quo. If you keep eating in that kiosk chapati nyingi, maragwe nyingi all the time, you never know. The other side, it might even be better chapatis. Try something different. If you keep walking with that same friend all the time, try to change. Not to hate that friend. No. Change. Change. The only thing that is constant is change. The only thing that is constant is change. And if you want to really grow, change. So to set goals, attitude leaders anticipate and manage change effectively. Managing change in an organization requires a four-step strategy. One, anticipate the problems. What are the problems that then come out? If I do this, what might happen? If we change, what might happen? Focus the organization. Leaders and team members alike look at results rather than the process. It's going to be painful. If you are sick, you're going to get an injection. But you want to see that you want to be well. That's the, you know, you are looking at the, uh, you look at the results, okay? Build a strong and supportive network, okay? So that's about goal setting. The second thing, foundation of strategic leadership in terms of uh, strategic communication methods of leadership, the second aspect. Remember, we've just been looking at goal setting and we came up with all those. So don't confuse, we are now the second element of community of leadership sorry is uh, what is foundation of strategic leadership goal setting is enhanced by situational knowledge the information a leader needs to manage a situation effectively what is this knowledge that he needs to simply to knowledge about the self who are you as a leader do you know yourself what are your beliefs what are your values what are your desires what is your personality are you angry, frustrated, Francis? Are you overdriven or opera? Okay. So you need to know about yourself. And then the second, also information about the organization and its employees. The more a leader discovers about his or her own abilities, weakness, and personal style. Saying the more a leader discovers about his or her own abilities, weaknesses, and personal style, the better prepared they are to take charge. All right. So learn more about yourself discover yourself push yourself you cannot know yourself by sitting at the stand you cannot know yourself by lying the whole day you cannot know yourself by just doing nothing every day that's why you need to plan every day try to test yourself as as young as you are right now in college try to push as much as possible so that you get to know what am i made of 
there is college academics, college education. I was told by my professor, in college, try as much everything as you can. Don't kill yourself, though. Don't go smoke about 20 rolls of bang. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't go try to drink a whole drum of alcohol, no. But get into drama club. Try basketball. Try music. Try graphic design. Try, try stuff. That's when you get to know what am I built of. Can I be a leader? What kind of a leader can I be? That's what we are talking about here, right? You don't know your capabilities until you try. All right, knowledge about the self, that's the first thing. Knowledge about self, that's what we've talked about. When it comes to foundation of leadership, you really not to, need to know about yourself. How well defined is your self-concept? We talked about self-concept in uh, communication right you are not born with it actually developed and it's developed by self appraisal it's developed by social comparison it's developed by interacting with the world communicating more most people think they have very accurate self-awareness we are not sure and that's why leaders self-evaluation concept i want you to do this then we'll grade it when we bring it in class not to grade for passing exam but grade it and see what is your self-concept, how developed it is. Rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 in each of the listed areas, with 1 being weakest and 10 being strongest. So, physical attraction intelligence, if you think you are very weak there, you put 1. If you think you are strong, put a 10. Sexual attraction creativity, look at that. And don't ever exaggerate. Somebody might think they are really sexually attractive, and you might be very wrong. But this, let me be clear, this is made from the West. This is an American thing. So we might not understand even what we mean by sexual attraction, creativity. So Google, see what it's about. See if you have it. It's not about sleeping with many women or many men. No, there is just that appeal you can have. They say the US, US presidents are usually having a high sexual appeal. It doesn't mean that you have to sleep with every man or woman you find. It's just a kind of a measure. So look at that, write that. When we meet, we'll actually look at your self-concept. We evaluate. All right, the second one under uh, foundation of strategic leadership is organizational knowledge. How much do you know about your organization? Do you know every job? That's why when you come in a job, it's good to start from the bottom. Work your way up to the top. Then you know every aspect of your organization. If it's in a for example, a school, you can start as a messenger, you get to be a cook, you get to be a teacher, then before you actually own a school, then you actually know what happens in every office, accountant, all right? Only by recognizing both the big picture and the fine print are leaders able to coordinate all the factors required for achieving goals leaders need. You need the following, continual learning. You cannot afford to not learn. They say great readers are, gre are great leaders. Great readers are great leaders. Continue learning. There's no time you can say you've reached. Personally, I, I can say, well, I've done my PhD, um, uh, well learned, then I, no, every day I keep reading at least a book. I keep a book. I have to. I keep knowing more about what's communication, what's the new thing about communication, what's the new thing about the world, what's really going on. Risk. You have to become comfortable with risk. You just have to... A ship, a ship is safe in the harbor, but that's not what it was built for. A ship has got to go out there. The more it's hit by the waves, the more it actually goes into the open sea, and that's what is called risk. So if you're at home and you're just seated and vegetating and just not wanting to cause trouble, my friend, you're not going to be a leader. That's organizational knowledge. All right, lastly demonstrating leadership skills. Remember, that's what we were talking about. We are defining leadership from a strategic communication methodology perspective. They were so the first one was goal setting. There is also the second foundation of uh, uh, strategic leadership. Now the third is demonstrating leadership skills. All right. What communication skills are necessary for leaders and how can you begin to develop them now? So according to O'Hare, in addition to effective listening, and verbal and non-verbal skills, all right? Remember, we've talked about listening, verbal and non-verbal skills, very important. 
the critical elements of communication are one, building trust, two, promoting understanding, three, empowering others. Let's look at those. Building trust, what does it entail? Trust results from a strong commitment to ethical behavior within the organization, organization system of values. You want to be able to trust you, then you have to have integrity. You have to be true to yourself. You have to be strong and uh, determined. You don't, you're not wishy-washy. You don't say this tomorrow and the other day you are actually changing your mind or you are taking water and uh, preaching wine or the other way around, preaching wine and taking uh, uh, water, that kind of thing. So what is then building trust, common purpose, competence, motives must be clear. That's building trust. Second one, we talked about understanding, promoting understanding. So we said, apart from listening, verbal and non-verbal skill, a leader needs to have three other things, building trust. The second now is promoting understanding. Understanding comes from listening to others, using clear and respectful language, and relying on appropriate techniques for behavior control. A good leader is not a dictator. A good leader is not autocratic. A good leader needs to hear the others. You don't have to take everything that they tell you, but you need to hear them. You need to give them an ear. And that's why we keep talking about giving people their voice. Don't make people voiceless. When you call a meeting and you're the only one talking, then you're actually not having a meeting. A meeting is where you discuss. Everybody has got an equal chance to actually put forward their ideas. Then we look at which is the best ideas. The market will choose. And the last one, empowerment. Empowerment means giving people the opportunity to think and act for themselves within the guidelines of shared values and vision of the organization. And now you want to ask yourself, in your county, you think the governor gives you this empowerment? Have you ever been able to go for what they call public participation? Do you think they really actually let you participate or it is actually a sham exercise? It's a fraud. I really believe public participation, we have really not understood what it's all about because people are called and they come in a few hours, they are told about something which they have not even studied, they have not looked at, they have not reflected on. It's in English, it's in a language they don't understand. So to me, I think it's a sham. Empowerment means let the people first read the document, let them understand it, let them discuss within their groups. Make sure you actually promote that discussion. Then when you meet in a common ground, then they already know what they're actually talking about. The same thing with the BBI. Personally, I've not even seen the BBI. I don't know who has that uh, record. I don't know where it is kept. And I thought at the university level, we should even have it in the library. If somebody has it, please let me have it. But that tells you about empowerment, how disempowered we are in Kenya. Personally, I think it's a good thing that it has been stopped. And they just have to do the thing the right way. Empower us. Let us read what BBI is all about. Not just a few. You have to interpret it for us. Right? Benefits yielded by trust, understanding, and empowerment include enhances creativity and increased productivity as workers take initiative to succeed without the direct control or coercion of manager or leaders. Right? So, people have personal initiative. They want to do it themselves. They are actually driven. Not here where we have a few who are driving the whole thing and the rest look like wagons in an SGR train. Framework for understanding leadership, here it is. Many theories and explanations of leadership have been developed. And here is one. We have leaders' characteristics and traits, leaders' behavior and style, group members' characteristics, internal, external, environment. You can see, look at that diagram carefully. They are all interrelated. Leaders' characteristics, traits, leaders' behavior and style, group members' characteristics, internal, all these affect leadership. This is just one of the many models or theories. Remember, we talked about it helps us make sense of uh, something. It helps us make meaning or understand a phenomena. So that's why we talk about <laughs> this phenomena called leadership, what it's all about. So according to the model, leadership can be understood by examining its key variables. So leadership depends on the leader's characteristics and traits, the self-concept the values, the desires. Secondly, the leader's behavior and style. Then the members that 
you are actually leading? What's their characteristics? What kind of group is it? Are they illiterate? Are they literate? Are they sophisticated and sophisticated? Are they wild? Are they unwild? Are they people who actually are civilized and civilized? Are people who are in college or people who are in primary school? That's a, and then internal and external environment. All right. So understanding leadership. Effect of leadership depends on four sets. So effects of four sets of variables. Let us examine them further. Leadership characteristics and traits. What are these inner qualities? Such as self-confidence, problem-solving ability that helps a leader function effectively in many situations. That goes back to the self-concept. Then the second one, we talked about leadership, behavior, and style. What is it all about? Activity engaged by the leader, including his or her characteristic approach that relates to his or her effective. How does the leader approach problems? How does the leader approach how people actually behave. Is this this one who comes and all the time criticizes? Does he work with the people? Is he the one who sits and orders around? A leader who frequently coaches group members and practice participative leadership, for example, might be effective in many circumstances. All right, number three, group members' characteristics refers to attributes of the group members. What uh, I've said, are they what kind of characteristics do they have? Are they young and the restless? Are they the old and the goldies? Are they a mixed group? Okay, intelligent, well-motivated group members, for example, help the leader do an outstanding job. But you need to coach them, you need to motivate them, you need to make them learn. Internal, external environment also influence leadership effectiveness. A leader in a culturally diverse environment, for example, will have, will need to have multicultural skill to be effective. That's why if you are a king or a community leader, maybe you are from one ethnic group, you don't need much skill because you talk the same language, you just are uh, part of that. Okay, you might, but I'm talking, compare it with the president of the U.S., Estados Unidos Americanos. Joe Biden has got to take care of so many aspects, uh, the Latino, the African American, the sophisticated, the migrants, the uh, women, single mothers, very multicultural. So I'll ask you, do you want to be a global leader or a village kingpin? Do you want to be coronated like uh, the way we had the speaker in uh, being a coronation of the Kikuyu king, which many are refusing, or do you want to be like Joe Biden, the president of the uh, United States, or like Kofi Annan? UN Secretary General, the choice is yours. So the arrows, the four sets of variables are just a reciprocal influence. Reciprocal means each affects the other, right? They actually affect each other. If you see the arrows, they are going both directions, okay? Most pronounced linkage is that the leader's characteristics and traits will typically influence the leadership style. So they influence each other, just like in a marriage. Your wife influences you and you influence the wife. Maria has shaped me now, I, who I am, I've shaped her for the 60 some years we've been together. It's the same thing with leadership. The leader will influence the group and the group will influence the leader. Group members' characteristics might influence the leadership style. If members are capable and self-sufficient, the leader is likely to choose a leadership style that grants freedom to the group, easier for leader to empower them. That's why in developed countries, the leaders are not as dictatorial. The people are not saying, Sarakali, Saidia, Raisi, Saidia. No, 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 no. They are actually uh, self sufficient. They want the leader to actually make policies, to give them services. They'll help themselves, which is where we need to go, really, in Kenya, where we're not looking at the president. You're not looking at your MCA. You're not looking at uh, the governor to feed you per se. We want them to provide services. We want them to provide roads. We want them to provide uh, a good uh, shelter. We want them to provide uh, good schools. The rest we do for ourselves. They provide the atmosphere to do business, to live. So internal and external environment can influence or mediate the leader's traits to some extent. In an environment in which creativity and risk-taking are forced, leaders are more likely to give expression to their tendency towards creative problem solving and risk taking. So where you have the leader telling, yeah, yeah, go, innovate, try, do stuff, okay? Free speech, speak. No, we're not going to muzzle it. Then it makes a big difference. 
even in any college that you find the leader goes down to the people you can actually see him the students can see him they can actually talk to him they can actually have dialogues with him then you'll find that even the university grows you find that there'll be difference and the students can feel more free to air whatever they are having but most of the strikes we have in the universities in the schools in the colleges it's because the leaders are actually hidden there i don't know what they're afraid of they get into their cars and they rush you just see them as if they are actually some demigods that are and that's funny leadership to me because you're making intellectuals can't they get some of your knowledge from you even if you are at the top i mean you must be a professor you must be a leader in some uh, discipline i think it's good for you to come around and uh, talk to these young professors coming not only once when the college opens or when the university the first years come i think that's a poor way to do it when i was in the u.s the president of the ohio university you'd meet him almost every day and, and he actually knew a number of us by name and he'll tell us you know his experiences and uh, you know he actually pro uh, he, he motivated us to think differently he motivated us to actually be creative and i really admire uh, professor gliden because i think that's what leadership is all about leadership who it's not really actually lowering yourself. No, you want to go to the people, you want to listen to them, you want to be able to, you know, mobilize them. You cannot mobilize people by delegating and sending your minions, your soldiers. That looks to me like a drug cartel. That's why you can never see the El Chapo. You cannot see the Godfather. You cannot see the El Capitan. But it doesn't happen in a good leadership, in a democracy. You need to actually have a leader who you can actually uh, dialogue, you know, gives expression and the voice to the people. All right. <laughs> leadership effectiveness refers to attaining desirable outcomes such as productivity, quality, and satisfaction in a given situation. So you are a leader on your own. There is a leader in you. You want to bring it out. Try to take this lesson and look at it in terms of you yourself. You're going to be a leader of your family. You're going to be a leader in a class. You're going to be a leader in maybe in your uh, group. You're going to be a leader maybe as a political leader. Remember, political leaders are a one small group of leaders, but we've given them too much authority of our lives. If you are a leader in medicine or you're a doctor and you're good, you're a leader already. You'll have a whole people coming to you. If you are a leader in communication, which I'm trying to be, I know the whole world will beat a path to me. If you are a leader in making mouth traps, everybody will come to you. Bill Gates is a leader in software. Everybody has made a trail to him. Elon Musk is a leader in uh, making uh, whatever he makes. Is it batteries? Uh, okay. Virgin Atlantic. Richard Branson is a leader in terms of, uh, you know, business in his own business steve job was a leader mark zuckerberg is a leader so political leaders is a small fraction of leaders and you don't have to want to be a political leader to be a leader you can be even a spiritual leader dalai lama is a spiritual leader you can be a leader in terms of uh, like bill gates have said knowledge you can be a leader in terms of uh, you know like uh, mahatma gandhi he never even wanted to be a president. He was just a conscientious leader, Dalai Lama, all right? So, that's leadership for you. What's the difference between a leader and a manager? Does right things, does, does things right? Manager does right things. Innovates, administers, focuses, short range. Long range for leader, short range for. Interested in change, that's... Uh, the leader for you. The ones in brown are the leader. Caught in up with vision. Asks what and why. Initiate orders. Wide outlook. All right? You have that in your... <laughs> so I'm going to stop there. That is it for now. Bye. Next time, we go to project management. Thank you.